So I'm going to drill down really quickly. I'm going to try to uh, keep us on time here to talk about my region in southern Oregon. Uh, this will uh, uh, head into another talk that looks even more local scale kind of uh, characteristics of climate. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our region, our characteristics, what is produced in the area, and a little bit about the landscape and the climate for that region. As you saw earlier in one of the, uh, the talk I had at the beginning, uh, Oregon has these 18 different uh, growing regions. Uh, my area is this area right down in here, going from Elkton through the Umpqua Valley, the Rogue Valley, and the Applegate Valley. I live right down here, about uh, uh, 15 kilometers from the California border. And so I'm going to be talking about this southern Oregon region. Um, we have uh, uh, currently in the region, we have six uh, uh, viticulture areas uh, that have been really only established since 1984. Uh, and then we've even had some just as recent as 2013. Uh, together within the state of Oregon, we represent uh, about 20 to 25 percent of the characteristic production within the state, whether it be through uh, uh, producing grapes, uh, acreage, uh, the number of vineyards, and a little bit less than 20 percent in the number of wineries in the state. Um, our industry has grown tremendously since 1984 from 21 growers to uh, at least 226, but probably even more today. Uh, wineries now, we have 121, so you can tell we, we have a, a lot of very small producers. Uh, planted acreage is getting close to 6,000 uh, acres, not hectares, acres. Uh, and then harvest is about 5,000. So the difference there tells you something about what's being planted for new uh, uh, production. And uh, tonnage is about 14,000 tons in 2014. And then we get roughly about $2,000 per uh, ton in terms of price paid. And the economic value is just in terms of the, the, the crop itself, roughly about 28 million. Uh, value added, of course, would be much more than that. Varieties planted, we have over 70 varieties planted, about 70% red and about 30% white. The acreage uh, is um, uh, quite diverse. Uh, we have a lot of Pinot Noir acreage because we have cool climate structures in some places and uh, Pinot Noir uh, does very well and produces a reasonably high yield there. But we have a tremendous number of other varieties and the all other being 10% should tell you something. We have a lot of people doing uh, a lot of different uh, uh, varieties uh, that are very unique. Uh, from a, a geology and soil perspective, I think uh, Kevin uh, alluded to this uh, earlier, we're kind of in this intermingling of uh, three different uh, characteristic uh, uh, geologic structures from a mixed coastal framework, uh, fairly young uh, accreted terrains, to a very old Klamath Mountain uh, type of uh, geology, to a, a relatively young, uh, more volcanic western Cascades. Uh, within this area, we have a tremendous range of soils. Um, there are alluvial soils throughout the uh, river, uh, valley, and terrace areas, a lot of marine and even some volcanic parent material within the region. Elevations are uh, uh, quite high throughout the region. If you go up into the Umpqua Valley, which is the more northerly reaches here, elevations tend to be relatively low, uh, getting down to maybe 50 meters uh, above sea level. Uh, whereas you go down into our region, down into some of these areas here, we can get upwards of 600 uh, meters in elevation uh, or, or more. Um, I want to talk a little bit about climate. Uh, we have some pretty good data for our region uh, being able to specify climate structure. And this is just some data on uh, the, our median dates of last spring uh, uh, freeze. Uh, and the, uh, the data is done by uh, two week periods here. And so you can see we have uh, very early last uh, um, uh, uh, frost freeze dates in uh, April up near uh, in the lower elevations closer toward the coast. Uh, in the Umpqua Valley, whereas we have uh, much later uh, uh, frost uh, freeze issues uh, uh, in the Rogue Valley um, with higher elevation. You can do the same thing looking at, at fall conditions. Uh, fall conditions, uh, uh, again, are showing that we're relatively late, much past harvest up in the Umpqua Valley, where we often, down in this area, we can end up having a, a freeze uh, hit uh, even when fruit is being uh, hung out uh, at late uh, periods in no, um, October, November. So uh, frost-free period varies quite a bit across our region. Again, elevation distance to the coast is the big issue here, uh, going from uh, as little as about 151, 52 days on average to over 200 days 
uh, depending on those locations. So uh, a little shorter seasons in some of these areas here. Shorter seasons, but hotter seasons too, so much warmer conditions. Uh, annual precipitation varies quite a bit. We have a, quite a bit of rain shadow. Uh, the mountains that are right here go from uh, relatively uh, low mountains of uh, three, four, five hundred meters to uh, eight, nine thousand meters or more down in this area. So we have quite a bit of rain shadow kind of uh, framework of southern Oregon. Um, so we're running anywhere from on average about 740 or so to over a thousand uh, millimeters of uh, rainfall. Um, growing degree days, uh, uh, this index over here is in degrees Fahrenheit units, so I apologize that I couldn't update it too quick, but this is in degrees Celsius over here. But the point is um, the, we have a, a fairly large range uh, going from relatively cool conditions in parts of the Umpqua to fairly warm conditions in the Rogue and some places that uh, are in some of the center part of these valleys here that uh, get up into uh, uh, fairly uh, um, hot conditions for grape growing during the middle of our summer. So just a, a, a quick summary of this. Uh, we have a, a very wide, diverse area of landscapes and climates for production within our region. I would have loved to have had you all down there, but it's a little bit too far to go. Uh, maybe someday you can come visit. Uh, the landscapes, geology, and soil are providing a huge array of terroir recognition within our region, and it's only now being really uh, uh, studied and, and, and understood with uh, any great degree. We have a growing season that is relatively short, six to seven to some degree, eight, eight months or more, but that short uh, uh, season really uh, uh, bookends varieties very well and it allows them to ripen in a nice, cool, uh, short autumn. We have sufficient annual rainfall in most, most places. However, growing season rainfall is quite low. Many places are down at 10% or less. Uh, growing season temperatures are relatively cool to fairly warm overall, and we have uh, very strong cool nights during maturation, as I mentioned in the earlier talk. So we have very wide diurnal temperature ranges. So with that, uh, I appreciate it. I, I wish I, my other colleagues could have come and give, us, uh, give a talk for their slot, but I wanted to fill this in because it does lead into the next pre presentation. So thank you very much.